In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the target setting tool for passenger light duty vehicle manufacturers. This Excel-based tool was created by the Science-Based Targets Initiative and is meant to help companies in this sector model science-based emission reduction targets for their manufacturing operations, that is, their scope one and two emissions. The targets modeled by this tool are aligned with the Sectoral Decarbonization Approach, or SDA, developed by the SBTI for this sector. A few caveats before we get started. First, this tool is only applicable to companies manufacturing passenger light duty vehicles, also known as passenger cars. For target setting regarding emissions associated with other road vehicle manufacturing and other sectors, refer instead to the general transport tool or the absolute contraction approach modeled in the general science-based target setting tool. Also, companies in the PLDV manufacturing sector can choose to use the absolute contraction approach to set scope one and two emission reduction targets using the general science-based target setting tool. Regarding scope three targets for the sector, companies should refer to the general transport tool, which allows companies to model targets on well-to-wheel emissions associated with their products. Note that targets covering use phase emissions of sold vehicles must be formulated using the corresponding sectoral approach in the general transport tool. This demo uses version 1.0 of the tool, but viewers should use the most recent version of the tool available on the SBTI website. Please also make sure to consult the latest SBTI criteria when developing targets. Where there are inconsistencies between this video and the latest versions of the criteria, target validation protocol, and or sector-specific guidance, the latest versions available of the SBTI materials take precedence. <clears throat> in this demo, we will focus on the use of the tool in the tool tab. Feel free to review the information in the method tab, which explains how the sectoral decarbonization approach was developed. Finally, before using the tool, please make sure to re read the terms of use and disclaimer in the intro tab. Let's get started. We'll first enter a base year and a target year. For this demo, we'll use 2019 as a base year and 2030 as a target year. We then enter the activity in the base year and expected activity in the target year. Our example company sold 3 million units in 2019. For expected activity in the target year, we'll use the sector growth rate provided by the tool, which for the selected base year and target year is 17.84%. If your company expects that its growth rate will not match the sector growth rate, you can enter an expected value in this cell that is derived using your own projections. We will then enter the scope one and scope two carbon intensity in the base year. We'll calculate this based on the scope one and two emissions in 2019 associated with the manufacture of these 3 million passenger light duty vehicles and divide those emissions by 3 million vehicles sold to get emissions per vehicle sold. Note that the emissions units here are kilograms of CO2 equivalent. For this example company, our results are 300 kilograms per vehicle for scope one and 500 kilograms per vehicle for scope two. Regarding the numerator of these values, companies should input the emissions associated with the sectoral activity and should not include other emissions generating activities in the modeling exercise. Scope 1 and Scope 2 emissions not covered by the SDA sector should be modeled using the absolute contraction approach or other SDA pathway if relevant. Note that as of this demo, the SBTI recommends modeling emissions from purchased heat, steam, and cooling in scope one instead of scope two for targets modeled with the SDA. And regarding the denominator of this intensity value, make sure this 3 million vehicles sold is the number of passenger light duty vehicles sold in the base year. This count of units sold should not include other vehicles sold by the company in the base year. After entering this data, we can scroll down to see the minimum ambition for this example company. These results are based on the selected base year and target year, base year and target year activity values in units of vehicles sold, and base year emissions intensity. The graphs compare the sector carbon intensity for scope one, scope two, and scope one and two together to this specific company's intensity pathway. The table presents the minimum scope one and scope two intensity ambition, and additionally, the ambition of scope one and two combined. If our PLDV manufacturing company submitted targets to reduce scope one emissions intensity 41.5% or more, 
and scope 2 emissions intensity 56.1% or more over the specified target period, they would pass ambition under SDA. The company could also submit a target covering scope 1 and 2 to reduce emissions intensity 50.5% or more, which would also pass ambition under SDA. Note, however, that if this company wanted to be classified as 1.5C aligned, they would need to set their targets using the absolute contraction approach with targets that amount to at least a 4.2% linear annual emissions reduction. And that's it for this demo of the PLDV manufacturer target setting tool. If you run into any functionality issues or bugs, please get in touch with us at info at sciencebasedtargets.org so we can continuously improve this tool. Consult the SBTI website at sciencebasedtargets.org for more information about ongoing development of sectoral tools and target setting methods. We hope this demonstration helps with your target setting journey and we look forward to receiving your target submissions soon.